Now, we heard a lot about how we can use and how humans might want to interact with robots. Um, we change scale a little and go back to the industries. We want to talk about not how humans interact with robots, but how robots interact with each other and how this is going to use in industry. So our next talk by Peter Grendel is going to be about Smart Factory. Come up here, Peter. Hi. Hi. <laughs> so we heard a lot about human uh, robots interacting with humans. Um, have you interacted with a robot yet? Actually, yes. So I've interacted with a robot. So I have an iRobot at home Okay. who is busy for us and cleaning up the rooms. Nice. That's pretty sweet. <laughs> so I have even this experience. I can really suggest to uh, talk to, 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 think, to think about this. The robots you're going to talk about, they're not so much for interaction with humans or how... They don't look like robots, right? Uh, sometimes they look, uh, look a little bit like robots. You know, um, automation is, is a big trend in the industry, especially I'm talking about the automotive industry. And when you go to a big plant from uh, what we support from Mercedes-Benz, you have around 90, 99% of all interaction with the vehicle based on robot technologies. But the robot has to learn because they do not know how to build a car. So you have to teach the robots, you have to program the robot. So there is a lot of interaction between the robot and the humans. You know, not in a daily business, but you educate the robots what they have to do. I'm pretty excited about that talk, Smart Factory. Um, you're going to lead us through us. Um, will you give a really quick introduction of yourself first? I don't know if the... Did you bring a presentation? I oh, it's up there I already. I bought okay, a, I saw a few it. slides okay. with me. Yeah. Wonderful. That next half an hour is yours. Thank you very much. So, welcome to the open stage. For me, it's first time to be on an open stage. <laughs> CBIT changed a little bit. Uh, I just had a conversation that my first CBIT was actually in 1992. So, uh, since then, a couple of things changed already. But many things are already the same. Um, she asked me to introduce myself. My name is Peter Grendel. I'm heading now the ABAT organization. Um, and before, I was a couple of years with a big software giant called SAP. So I was a management of SAP, taking care about the automotive industry. And I'm still in automotive. Uh, we support automotive customers. What uh, the moderator said, uh, interaction with robots, making the production possible. And uh, one of the big trends, what they asked me, talking to a little bit, about is uh, digitalization in, in, in the production and digitalization in the industry. So this is one of the things what I brought with me. Um, the question is how I can change the slides. Did I forgot something? I have my car key with me, but this will not help. <laughs> Thank you. Good. So uh, before I talk about robots and interaction with robots and uh, digitalization of uh, the industry, uh, one or two slides about customer behavior and the uh, situation what we are facing at, uh, at customers, at people, at buyers in, uh, in the economy. So some of these are from research organizations and what I believe what is very interesting that, uh, and this is, that is a uh, thing what we're facing with our iPads, with our iPhones, and also in the industry, you know, the connecting devices. Um, a car is more or less a device. It's not only a car anymore. So it is not, not a vehicle that brings you from A to B. You know, so it's a comfort, it's quality, it's many more. It's also a device what you can use, what you can handle. So around 50 billion connected devices around the planet there's an interesting number what I see. Another interesting uh, number what I see is 75%. Uh, uh, um, so I actually, I started my company in 2010 when I left the SAP organization, founding a known company. Um, it's not a typical age, starting a new company when I, I'm getting 50. Uh, this number is interesting because the millennials, so the young people will come up and they will change our life and they will change the behavior in our industry and uh, dramatically. Um, some other topics, uh, the uh, business commerce is interesting, uh, business networks is very interesting, and 90%, so data, we are surrounded by data, yeah? so it is impossible to live without any device, and uh, even the kitchen is talking to us, yeah? so we do actually a, an interesting job with a big kitchen company in Germany, 
where the kitchen is intelligent, you have your smartphone with you, put the smartphone on the kitchen on a small tablet on a an an, an device, and the, uh, the panels are going down, the lights is changing, even when you're just entering the kitchen. So we are surrounded by data. The 90% is an interesting information for me, yeah, that the uh, world's data, 90% of the world's data was generated in the last two years. Um, coming a little bit more to digitalization and to, uh, to our business. Customer behavior has changed. Um, so uh, the way of shopping changed, even the way how customers are buying cars. So we Germans are a little bit more conservative on how we buy a car. We like to touch, we like to feel, we like to experience a car. But when we do business, when we do consulting in, in China or in America, so even the people buy a car completely different in China. So we work with a Chinese company, um, just configure the car in the internet, and a company like Amazon is shipping the car to you. Yeah, so this is changing the way of shopping. So uh, one of the statistics, 22% uh, of the tablet users are doing shopping by a tablet uh, every day. Yeah, so it's an interesting statistic. Applications are everywhere. I learned from Mercedes, from one of our customers, that the new E-Class is even able to park into a lot just using your iPhone. Yeah? You do not sit anymore in a car. You left the car, and the car is doing the parking by himself. Yeah? So it's driven by an app. Um, a little bit disappointed we have not developed this app, so we do <laughs> some other things. Um, another interesting thing is 90% uh, of the users leave their smartphone not far away, one meter, like I do. Yeah? So the iPhone is everywhere, so the internet device is everywhere. The message behind this is we are surrounded by data, so we cannot live without any device talking about data and other things. Um, new customer requirements, coming a little bit closer to production, coming a bit closer to the car business. Mobility. I have a small son, he is six. I experience mobility completely different like the he will do when he is able to drive a car. When he will get the allowance of driving a car, I believe he will not buy a car, he will buy mobility. He will buy mobility in the way that he, the sun is shining outside and he like to go out with his girlfriend or with some other friends. Today I like to drive a convertible car so that there's a service selling him mobility that he can drive as a convertible car to whatever, a bar or to a club or whatever. A couple of days later, it's raining and they will go out, go to a football match or whatever with some friends, yeah, and then a big station wagon will come and will pick him up. So mobility, I see it's a complete different trend in the future. Um, highly customized vehicle, highly customized products, it's another interesting topic, quality. Yeah, so quality is going up and that the, uh, the, the products in the middle will go down and that we have low-cost products and that we have high-cost products. This is a big trend what we see in our business. Value for money, everybody likes to have as much as he can, as she can, when he spend and she spends some money, that he gets as much as we can for our money. Um, the message behind this is we need new models of support. We need new models of support from the production side, and we need new models of support from the IT side. Complete different things what we see. I call it the business and IT transformation. And uh, when I talk to our clients, to our customers, they can even not buy toilet paper without IT. Yeah, so IT and business has to come as much closer together as we had this yeah, 10 or 15 years ago in a CBIT. So there's a big trend what we see, new models of support in our business. Some other things coming closer, as I mentioned before, to the uh, automotive industry. Do you know, you can see it on the slide, how much data a modern car can produce by driving it uh, one day? 17 gigabytes. So I'm driving a, a comfort car yeah, and I discuss it with the engineers, so 17 gigabytes of data can be produced by the car driving it one day. Another thing is, I mentioned it, a car is not anymore a car, it's a device, it's an IT system. When I asked you the question, do you know how many, so we computer guys, and I'm heading a computer factory, a software factory, uh, we, sometimes we count the lines of code to tell the computer what he has to do to make something happen. Do you know how many lines of code are necessary to bring the space shuttle to the moon? Does anybody have an idea? Around 2.8 million lines of code. 
the highest modern airplane, the A380, has around 8 million lines of code. Microsoft Office package, around 40 million lines of code. A Mercedes-Benz S-Class. Do you know how many lines of code a Mercedes-Benz S-Class has? 110 million lines of code. Forget about the typical interesting IT systems. Mercedes, I don't know what the new, actually the new uh, BMW 7 series has in the stomach. Something minimum, something similar. But 110 million lines of code. So a car is an IT system. And this is what I like to say with this. A car is an IT system. Collecting data, generating data. And on the other side, the production, what we had in the introduction first, the production is highly customized, highly individualized, and many interactions to build a vehicle. Yeah, so robots are talking to the car, doing something, if this is welding or if this is screwing or if this is gluing or whatever. And people are working with the car, interacting with the car. And this is the idea of digitalization of production is use the power of such a vehicle, use the power of a, of a product who is generating data and use the digitalization strategy of, of a production plant to combine these two, two, data, two data pieces. So you see it here, around 25 million transactions are necessary to build a car today in a plant, in a modern plant. Yeah, and this is, again, interesting data source. So data sources are customers, we as a user, dealers, markets, partners, I mentioned the car before, and production. A very busy slide, I have to apologize for this. Yeah, it's not easy to read. Uh, driving business and process model transformation in manufacturing is the headline. So it's more or less a summary. Yeah, it's more or less a summary about what I said before. So it is, it is the, the, the engagement and the behavior of the customers, of the people is changing. And the transformation of the business model is changing. So the way how we use products how we use a car in the future, with the example of my son. Yeah, so at the end of the day, we believe we have to qualify the production in such a way that the production can be organized and steered by the user, by the customer. That you configure a car yeah, based on the idea and the, the, uh, the concept of Industry 4.0 and the Internet of Things, that you configure a car on the Internet and then that you bring this into, directly into the production, that you see how far it is, and we're actually working with, with our client Mercedes on such a strategy when you configure a Mercedes, that it goes directly into the production, and that you will then see screenshots or cameras out of the plant that you see where your car is already. If it is painted, or if you have just a marriage between the engine and the powertrain and the body, you know, so you see then the steps in the internet. So we are working on this. So transformation business model, it will look different in the future. Networked economy. I highlighted a little bit with the idea of the connection between vehicles, the connection between the vehicles, the users, and the production. So any, any kind of data sources are necessary and interesting for us in the future. And this will, end of the day, result in big data and Internet of Things. I only see one interesting topic here. Normally, somebody should raise their hands. What is with security? Who owns this data? Uh, so this is one of the things what we from IT and what they have to uh, think about how can we handle the security and the usage of the information of the data. One other thing is the small arrows in gray, dark gray, yellow, light gray, and dark gray again. This is a production process. This is a production process how to build, in my example, a car. And we see that this is a very interesting process. And this is one of the ideas what, what, what we follow and what we believe in. Um, it's one of the big trends in, in, in IT, standardization. But we believe, and I believe strongly, that standardization around the planet will not work. Different reasons for this. So the behavior is different. Chinese people think a little bit different about mobility, about the environment, about health, about production. The Americans think different like we Germans and we Europeans do. So one of the reasons why global standardization from this perspective will not work. But we have to standardize. We have to support the complex plants, the complex production en environments. And this is the, uh, the, the challenge what we from IT, I believe, we have to face is the difference between standardization on one face or one side 
and individualization on the other side. There was something at CBIT and on some other fairs, what I learned a couple of years ago is, they called it SOA, service-oriented architecture. We strongly believe in this, as we believe that we can standardize functions. So a function, if this is interaction with a car, bringing data into a system, will always be the same. If a computer is doing this, if a robot is doing this, or if a human is doing this. The interface is looking different, and maybe the, uh, the way how to do it is different. But end of the day, the function is the same. So we believe that we can standardize, not based on processes, but based on functions, around the planet in different countries in the world. We had the honor to do this and to run such a project for our client Mercedes, you know, to have one template, one system approach, but in a complete different interpretation. If this is working in the United States, or if this is working in China, or if this is working in uh, South Africa. Same approach but different interpretation, this is important for me to say, the interpretation of IT, how to use it and how to make it happen. Back to the, back to the uh, process, and this is one of the ideas, and they asked me also to share some ideas and some uh, future trends and some future visions. The usage and the combination of this data. Combination of the data coming from a vehicle, coming from a plant, coming from the users. When we start in production, normally everything is engineered. If this is a cell phone, or if this is a, a robot, or if this is a computer, or if this is a car. So in engineering, you, know, you, you define the roots of the product. Then it comes end of the day to logistics, where you organize everything. Is this material, if these are just-in-time information and partners, or if these are just partners bringing you some material to make something happen in your plant. And then it comes to production, and end of the day, it comes to the after-sales, to the service part. When you bought, bought the product, if this is for the kitchen or if this was a, was a car, you have something to do with after-sales, with services. And in the traditional way, how I learned it many years ago is, each was separated. Yeah? So the engineers did their job, and the logisticians did their job, and the production guys did their job, and everybody collected his own data and put it into the data, into a database. So the vision is what we have together with our partner called SAP, is to bring everything together. To bring everything together. So in my, in my example with the car, the intelligent vehicle, yeah? so device, a car is a device, is generating tons of information, tons of data. Bring this into a database in, and combine this with logistic information and to combine this with production information. If you make this happen, and if the users, if we are allowing this, then we can organize and then we can generate what we like to have, completely new service models. To give you an example on this, my car was down mid of last year, was asking for a service, service called A2, yeah, and I called the service organization, I called the garage and said, okay, my car needs service A2. And they uh, picked up the car, brought it into the garage, and uh, two hours later, the service manager gave me a call and we said, yes, we have some problems with some parts. It's not only the, the parts of the brake disc, so we need completely brake discs. And it took two days to make this happen, that they organized all parts to make my car up and running again. Normally my car recognized that my brake disc was over. But this information was stored in the car. And the service organization just got to know about this information when the car was coming into the garage. If we have such a system, a database, and the car is connected to this database, together with the production information, then we can do the combination and doing something, what is a big trend in the industry, what we call predictive business, predictive maintenance. Algorithm can work on this, yeah, that already the parts will be organized when the car is coming into the service station. What is what we call closing the loop from the source systems, doing the combination, doing the analytics, back to the source systems. So this is the idea and the vision, what I'd like to share with you to make the things happen. And we from ABAT are one of the, we call it enabler for Industry 4.0 and for digitalization of uh, plants and manufacturing. And we start at the roots. We do not start in the, in the engineering. So we start at the roots of the management of the robots, management of the plants, management of the production processes. Now I'm open for questions. 
So when you have any ideas, any feedback, any questions, let me know. I'm more than happy talking with you about some, some ideas in this, in this area. Even the moderator should have prepared something. <laughs> so it's, is there any questions in the audience? I realized before we do have a shy audience. Yeah. <laughs> oh, there, on the floor. <laughs> how many, uh, sorry, how many uh, lines of code need Tesla car? A Tesla car? Yes. Um, a Tesla car is, from what I know, it's around 80 to 90 million. So it's a high digitalized car, yes. It's not so much as a Mercedes has, and this is based on the security systems. Tesla has not so many uh, what they call the assistant systems. You know, each assistant system needs, needs a an, an, an controller, and there are some less in, in a Tesla car. But I can point the question back. Do you know how many lines of code was necessary to make WhatsApp happen? Around 300,000. And they sold it for 17 billion. <laughs> 300,000 lines of code. So a Tesla is a little bit less than, uh, than a Mercedes or a BMW. Even that it looks very, very, very technical. More questions? Oh, back there. You might want to come a little closer here so, so the speaker can, can see you, huh? I can see you. You, you had a question? Okay. On the previous slide, when you're talking about the sources of data, and then we have the SAP system, it looks to me like these are uh, all operational systems. I mean, where is this big data coming from on that slide? I mean, the sources look to me like this is business as usual. This is uh, structured data, more of uh, like semi or unstructured data. Yeah, you're right. You're right. And I was in business intelligence before, so this is not really new. The problem is that what I, what I tried to mention before, uh, the business versus IT transformation. Normally, each business did his own job in IT and in business. And the problem is to bring it together and to have a powerful infrastructure like SAP HANA as a database where you can bring really big data in, where you can do the analytics. This was not really available in, a, in the last years, so the infrastructure. But the idea, I'm right, or you are right, this is not the new thing, but the opportunity to bring everything together and to do the analytics. Okay, you get the last question. I actually have two questions. So with this slide, AI is included in the, the smart factory concept. In your slide, SAP server uh, seems to have an AI. Is AI included in this concept? Yes. That's my first, okay. Yeah. So second question is like a Toyota lean manufacturing uh, scheme system. So if Toyota wants to uh, you know, implement this uh, smart factory system, is there uh, current existing lean production coexist with the uh, smart factory system, or do they have to have their complete, you know, uh, new process of the manufacturing? Um, therefore, we have to respect the uh, philosophy how to build cars. Toyota has a completely different uh, philosophy how to build cars compared to some German car makers. This is one what we have to respect. And the other way is, um, this is a concept. Yeah, and the concept means that you have a journey from one uh, status to the other. This means you cannot switch like this and they make it happen. So to your question, I hope this answered your question. It is a journey. You start, for example, in quality. Toyota has, with all respect to Toyota, some issues with quality and with callback. Uh, so it could be an interesting opportunity to start in quality, to gather quality data, fault data, rework data, to optimize the, uh, the callback rate, and then to go from station to station, say, okay, this is in body shop, and then to go to painting or to manage the buffer. So if you ask me, so my feedback on this is, don't start with a big bang to have a smooth migration into a smart factory, into an industry 4.0 strategy. Thank you very much, Peter Grenel from Arbeit AG. Um, give him a warm hand. Thank you. Merci.